Um, I'm going to show you how to do the graph uh, for the spring constant graph, right? So this is the handout. You should have that, and you'll be able to work on this um, in class. Uh, but here is our beautiful data table. Here is our restoring force. Notice that that uncertainty right there is very, very small. Um, but this one's quite large, so we'll actually be able to draw a graph with error bars. Okay. Now, I made a graph already. And so we've got force, and the force needs to go up to 9.4, and the stretch distance needs to go to 0.3. So I just did this. This is pretty simple. Every, every uh, square is a, is a one hundredth of a meter, right? And so 10 of them is a tenth, right? And then on the vertical scale, I made everything 0.2 of a uh, newton. And so we actually can go up to 10. And I've plotted the points. You can see the points right there. Right, the experiment number is always experiment number 626, right? And then the only thing we need to make this a beautiful graph is uh, to say uh, force versus distance. This is, by the way, called a force curve. This is a spring, okay? Now, there's a couple things we got to do with this graph. The first thing is that we got to put error bars on there. Notice that the error bars are half a newton, right? Plus or minus a half a newton up and down. Right? And so those are going to be nice and big. Okay? A whole Newton up and down, and a whole Newton is this big. Right? So here's my little trick. Is I take another piece of paper and I make a little jig here. So that's how big my error bars are going to be, and the point is going to be right there in the middle. Yeah? So just kind of eyeball that, right? Yeah? That's going to be my point, and so when I put these error bars on there, and I like to tilt the thing. Okay, I just hold it on there like that. And these are nice big error bars. That guy's right in the middle there, right in the middle. Okay. And then you want to draw your error bars with a straight edge like that. And I just draw one half of the little I-beam. And then I can later add another half like that. Okay. So again, half up, half down. That guy's right there. So this thing goes from the middle there to the middle there, right? And I'm just going to go like that. And again, here's this guy. This is pretty fun, isn't it? Watching some guy make a graph. Notice you want to line the error bars up with the, the grid lines like that. I'm actually not very good at this one. This one's going to be right on the points because the point itself is between the points, right? There we go. And then, again, this one's going to be halfway here. Halfway there, right? Half a Newton up and half a Newton down. Just two more to go. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? All right, so that's what you're going to do. Charlie, whoops, make this guy not crooked. Okay. Okay. And then all we have to do really is our lines. There we go. That's some of the sorriest looking error bars ever, right? This is not my strong suit. Okay, and all I'm doing is I'm just making those little eye things about the right size, right? Okay, and then I'm going to write on here uh, X error bars neglected. And we can do that because that's such a small, small uncertainty, okay? Now what we have to do is we've got to draw three lines. The first line is going to be my best fit line, and it's going to go through these points that are the graph itself, that now need to be kind of emphasized, right? And it's just going to be kind of a best fit line. This is where your clear ruler is an advantage, right? And so is that about right? That's about right. I like that. Now, obviously, Excel can do this for you, OK? Now, 
if you look at this, I can find the slope of this line by reading my graph, right? I can just read that graph. My rise is 10. Hey, there's some people out in the hall. My rise is 10, and then my run, I can figure out my run is, uh, go here, and then it's, uh, what does it look like? This one is 0.3, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0 0.34, 0 0.32, right? So the run, it would be like about roughly 10, a rise of 10 divided by a run of about, what, 0.325, okay? That would be my slope, right? So remember, slope is rise over run, okay? And then the, the, the second thing is that we want to figure out what is the steepest slope and the least steep slope, okay? The steepest slope goes exactly from this point to this, to this point, okay? So we draw that guy there. Now I don't have to read the graph to do the slope of that. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I don't have to read the graph, but that's what you need to draw. And then you need to draw the least steep slope. So this is the steepest, right? This is the best fit, right? And then you're gonna show the slope of the best fit line, right? And then this is the least steep line. The shallowest line, what do you call that? Whoops, I just moved my thing. Not the steepest, but the least steep. So there is our least steep line. Now let me show you a trick. Since we are actually using an IB, you use the actual points that are those error bars, right? We can actually cheat a little bit, right? The steepest line, we can use point-point formula here, right? The steepest line is the one where it goes from, notice that this is plus or minus 0.5. So the steepest line went from low error bar to high error bar. That meant over a run of... 0.3 to 0 0.05, right? It went up from 1.1 all the way up to 9.9. 1.1 being 0.5 less than 1.6, and 9.9 .9 being 0.5 more than 9.4, right? So that's what these points are, okay? So I can just simply go rise, which is this minus this, divided by run, which is this minus this, okay? And for the least steep, okay, the least steep line goes from the high one there to the low one there, right? So the high one would be 0.5 more than this, so from 2.1, and then this would be 8.9. Okay, so the least steep line has a run, a rise of 8.9 minus 2.1 and a run of 0.3 minus 0 0.05. Okay, so that's what you can do. If you want to have a head up on this, right, you could just graph these points and then we can work on error bars and stuff like that uh, in class. But, but that's the notion. That's what we're going to do.